and welcome to Mastering Music with Matthew. Today, music teachers react to Floor Janssen's second vocal masterclass. We're going to be learning her breathing technique. I'm so excited about this. It's a little bit of a long class, so hang in there with me, everybody. We're going to watch it, and then we're going to talk about it at the end. Joining me today, my very good friend, music teacher, partner in crime, and vocal student, Jennifer Valiquette. How you doing? Good, how are you? Thanks for having me again. <laughs> Definitely, it's great to have you on. So, Thank you. So remember last week we were learning about don't stress your jaw. I tried that exercise a few times. I really enjoyed it. I'm really stoked for this second, uh, this second lesson from Floor. What do you think? Yeah, I'm excited too. I tried it also and I feel like it helped a little bit. <laughs> Very good. Well, so we're just going to get right into this. Hello and welcome back to my master class. You just jumped into number two. I don't know if you already watched number one, but I would recommend you to do so if you haven't. In my previous masterclass, I told you that everything I'm going to tell you is based on my own experiences. Yes, I'm a trained vocalist and yes, I've been teaching a lot, but it's been a while and vocal methods has been updating itself throughout the last 10, 15, 20 years and it constantly gets better and better. And uh, um, I think it's important that you would work with a teacher nearby to you instead of only watching things on YouTube because it's very hard to get the right reflection. Uh, I cannot be your talking mirror, which means that I would like to reflect on what you're doing exactly when you're doing it. Um, if you cannot have an actual teacher nearby to you, um, training in front of the mirror is still a big, big, big recommendation because then you can actually see what you're doing and not only feeling because our instrument is on the inside. But we can still see, is our belly working? Are all the muscles working that we want to have working? Are there any muscles working that we don't want to have? Those are things that you can see instead of only feel and that's an important thing that I really want to recommend to you. Well, today we're going to go through the basics because those are so important to continue all the other singing that you might want to do. And uh, one of the most fundamental things is right breathing and the right breathing technique. There we go. So we're going to be talking a little bit about breathing. Fortunately, you do that every day. So you have been practicing quite a bit, but in the day-to-day -day breathing, you breathe out here, your lungs extend here. So obviously the lungs are the parts where the air goes into, but they're not only up here. They go all the way down here and they're also at your back. They can extend towards here. They can extend towards here. They can come out to the side. So there's a lot of place for air. So what's interesting to know, and we'll be looking into this, is how much air you actually need to sing. Because air builds a pressure. If you think of your lungs like a balloon and you blow it up and there's a lot of air in there, there's also a lot of pressure you create. And that's where our breathing support comes in later to make sure that that air does not come out because with regular breathing you breathe in to immediately breathe out again with singing you don't want to just lose all that air but you have built a pressure so you're going to need the right kind of muscles to support that breathing but first we want to see where we breathe towards so we don't want to sing up here why not because there are not too many muscles in this area that can actually support the breathing, as in hold back the air and give off bit by bit that you need throughout the entire sentence and not just in the first half. <gasps> and end up like that. So um, what we want to do is breathe towards our bellies. And we also do that on a daily basis. Woohoo! So that's good. But we usually do it when we're relaxed and usually when we're laying down. Um, so the first exercise is not going to happen in front of a camera because it's no fun seeing me laying down and relaxing. But I do invite you to try that and see what happens if you start to relax and you lay down on your couch or well, on your bed, wherever you want to just get comfortable. You feel that the breathing goes from up here to down here. So your lungs start to extend towards your belly and your belly makes space for your lungs to extend. That's the kind of breathing that we like with singing uh, as for starters, because we can still use other areas as well. But this is a fundamental one because there is a lot of muscle in this area that is good for breathing support that will help you to not just breathe out, but keep the air in and support it up again. So what's going to happen in the end is going to breathe out. And when you relax, as you do on your couch, 
your belly goes out and your lungs can extend. So you first want to get familiar with that feeling. It's going to get a little bit harder when you stand up. In my experience as a teacher and even when I was a student, I find it very hard to just instantly relax. If I look at my belly, I can feel my belly. I can look in the mirror and see my belly and it's not relaxing. So how do I do that? Um, for me personally, it was easiest to start stressing muscles instead of trying to instantly relax them. Because from stressing those muscles as hard as I could, it was much easier to let them go because they get tired after a while. So a first exercise is putting your hands on your belly, one up here where your stomach is and one here where your belly button is. I'm going to take a deep breath in and now you're going to breathe out on F with all the power that you have, but I want you to feel that you use the belly muscles. There we go. By letting go, I already have enough air. I don't need to get any extra, but that's something you're going to be practicing on. So we're going to do, repeat this a couple of times. Look at yourself in the mirror. You look just as smart as I do in front of the camera right now. It doesn't matter how you look. Focus on how it feels. There we go. Stress, no, stress, no, stress, no. And relax. And again. It doesn't need to do, doesn't need to take so long. We just want to push out the air and let it go. Push out the air, breathe back in, push out the air and see if we can actually relax the muscles we stressed because that's where we want to go towards. Don't get frustrated when it doesn't happen on your first attempt and give yourself a little pat on the shoulders when it did because it's not that easy. This needs repetition. That's it. If that starts to feel a little bit more comfortable and you didn't get all hoo -hoo, because maybe in the beginning you don't get enough air, take it easy with yourself and allow your body to get used to this a little bit. Then we can go for a second exercise where we took short puffs out. So we stress the muscles every time we breathe out like this. And then I take a little break and maybe I try it again. And then I think maybe a little bit more air because I'm not going to breathe in in between. I'll just bring it out, push it out. <sighs> ah, and I can relax. Nice. What happens when you breathe out is that the air goes out of your body. And in a minute you relax your muscles and allow it to go in by opening your mouth and your um, throat. It just goes back in. We're going to try that on a long F, on a long F. But now this time I want you to focus on not just breathing out, but I want the beginning and the end of your breathing out on F equally strong. Think of it as a sentence in a song. You start singing the sentence and you want to have as much energy on the first note as you do on the last of your sentence. So if you put it back into singing cont content, it's very important that you know how to stress the muscles equally throughout the whole sentence and that you don't run out of breath before that. So we're going to put it back into a simple breathing exercise where we breathe out on F from the first to the last equally strong. When you need to take a breath, take it and try to see if you can actually focus on getting it towards your belly. There we go. Now I know that this exercise might not seem, might seem very similar to the first one that we did, but now the focus lays on equally long, equally strong breathing. That already takes the focus away of other things and you need to give yourself the time to build up these things. Um, it's sometimes a little bit boring, I must admit. It really is, but it's gonna help you so much because this is programming your body, feeling how the muscles work slowly but surely and hopefully instantly relax. Now I put my hand on my stomach and on my belly button here 
there are muscles everywhere here and they work a little bit differently because while they're here, up here there's a stomach so as soon as you start to stress these muscles here they actually go out a little bit those muscles because they're on top of the stomach down here when the muscles start to stress they go in a little bit so what you're going to feel when you really work for it you're going to feel that this area becomes a little bit rounder and this area becomes a little bit more flat and the other way around when you relax then this area becomes a little bit more flat and this becomes a little bit more round um, that can help you in the process of finding the right way to stress the muscles uh, feel it with your hands see it in the mirror feel what happens with your body inside of it uh, the combination will help you in the process um, the same exercises we can do on a note still focusing fully on actually breathing so what we're going to do now is sing on an ah take whatever note is comfortable for you and we're just going to see if we can only focus on pushing out from here and letting it go there we go ah this becomes a bit rounder and this a little bit flatter and i push everything out that i have and then i go ah If it doesn't work, maybe take a step back, try it on and then integrate it back into a note. Take your steps. Boring, yes, necessary. We can also do the second exercise where we do short puffs and we take the power, 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 let it go. We're going to see if we can put that onto a note. There we go. Ha, 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 ha. That already takes a little bit more control because now I'm also singing. So I want to control my voice. I don't want to just go anywhere. And I'm doing this. You see where I'm getting at? That the combination of things are only going to start building up. Now we just did it. Ah, think of it. Uh, think if we're going to do a whole exercise, it already becomes harder. Think we're going to put this into a song. And we also need to remember what we're actually singing. Take your time to build things up. If it feels like, hmm, I'm singing this song, but I'm never reaching that high note, or I, I just always run out of breath. Go back to your exercises. See if you can build a better stamina. See if you can build a better control and go again. All right, we did one more exercise where we really focused on singing, breathing, equally strong. From the first moment you start to sing to the very last note you sing, it's going to be supported. It can just go down because you're running out of either power or uh, eh. So we're going to try that with a full focus on that. We're going to take the same ah, whatever is comfortable for you. Um, focus on the breathing. Feel how the stomach is doing. There we go. I don't want it to go down. There at the end here, I got a little bit tired. I need to build better up. I need to feel that I can really use everything that I have power wise and breathing wise to sustain the whole note. There we go. We practiced. Ah, That was it for breathing part one. There's lots to do with this and it's super, super boring. So I hope I made it a little bit more fun for you. Go and stand in front of your mirror, confront that self and practice. Good luck. Breathing support. Where do you support? Which muscles do you actually use and which one do you not use? Well, we already focused on the belly and the lower belly, the area around your stomach. That's a very, very main area that you really want to have control over. Then there's the entire diaphragm that really helps to support uh, with a massive power center here. <laughs> and then there are the muscles near your back here called your uh, uh, latissimus dorsi. It sounds very fancy. It, for a very, very strong man, it looks like they have wings. 
And for women, it's usually where your the area where your uh, bra is. Um, but then there are also muscles in your lower back that really help to sort of support, keep up the torso when everything else starts to work. Muscles up here, no, they don't really work. Your shoulders, nah, they just they just stress. Uh, jaw, no. <laughs> How about your ass, no. <laughs> There are so many more muscles that seem to want to work along, but they don't really. You can still use a lot of energy from your body to really get there, as long as you don't stress the right ones and not everything else. Uh, so we're going to pick this up in, in, in parts, because uh, we cannot just reach all those muscles at once. Uh, well, during my lessons, I found it very difficult to just point at somebody's muscle and say, this one, here, feel mine. Now I feel yours. Can you use it? It's very difficult because you have maybe never used it uh, like that in the context of singing. And so uh, one of the things I started recommending because I felt it myself so much is to go out and sports, do a lot of sports and get really sore in those muscles because then you'll really feel them the next day. And when you start to stress them a little bit, they're like, oh yeah, hmm. You know, the feeling of doing sports and coming home with muscle ache in places you didn't know even had muscles. Well, that's sort of where I'm getting at. Get, get them sore so you can feel where they really are. When you start to sing, activate them. And uh, that process is slow. It's going to take a little bit of time to get used to where they actually are. And this is the part where I wish you could stand in a room with you to show them where they actually are and how to activate them. Um, in general, good action and activity and power in your body is vital. One of the things I noticed throughout my lessons and throughout the years was that a lot of people uh, don't know how to tap into the real energy in their bodies. That didn't mean they were not strong enough, but how to activate yourself. And uh, the people have, that had lessons with me will remember how I asked them to give me their hands and I would put them Put, grab their hands like this and drag them through the room. Because the minute I started pulling on them, they started activating a lot of muscles. Surely also a couple we don't really need, but definitely a lot that we do. So if you're going to practice and you feel like you actually need a little bit more power, grab a friend by the hand that you feel comfortable with to help you. And um, if you don't really feel comfortable with that, you can still wrap a a rope or something around something that you really hold so you can hold yourself and pull when you need extra power not all the time but when you need a little bit extra because the moment you do this you and you go through your knees a little bit you activate a lot of muscles in your belly you surely will activate a lot of muscles in your back just try to not pull up your shoulders keep them down because they that's where they they're best at their best and then it's also easier to activate this latissimus dorsi and keep your back straight that's where energy lies. But do you need 100% of your power all the time? Do you need 100% of the potential air you can take up in your lungs all the time? No, no. So that is another puzzle to make because um, you might sing a very low tone, but with a lot of air on it. It's gonna take a lot of your support and a lot of air to make an air an airy note. If you sing a very high belted note, yeah, it's gonna take a lot of control and power, but just a tiny bit of air actually. And I see a lot of singers thinking, preparing themselves physically and mentally for the high note to come, and there they go. <gasps> and then it doesn't really get out. Why not? We should have had the shoulders down. We should have maybe taking a little less breath because the moment that we really lift everything here, we cannot use a part of this area longer. We cannot use the latissimus dorsi, we cannot use the back really. And then we have so much air in our lungs. Think of that balloon and think of that tiny bit of air that you actually need for a belted note. It's just gonna be really, really, really difficult to support all that air for not just flowing out. So maybe you recognize this from yourself. As soon as the high note comes, you fight to, you go up like this, or the jaw starts to clinch, and you take so much more air. You can do this during exercises, and I will surely come back to this even when um, 
where we're going to continue with a little bit more like breathing exercises and vocal exercises that we're going to focus on how much air you actually need. And very often it's just a tiny percentage of the actual capacity of both your breathing as the power, the jaw, the helpful jaw. The one that wants to help along when you start to sing hard and reach for the note when it comes. Or the jaw that in general wants to come forward or a whole head that wants to lift up. We want our heads here. It's maybe a very old fashioned thing, but they used to tell me this to think of a long rope on top of your head or you can, if you have long hair, you can just pull yourself up and make sure that you don't pull backwards because you're going to you're gonna pull the string because you just don't want to lift like this. You can even hear it when I do so. This little area starts to push onto the larynx where the vocal cords are in and creating a pressure that's obviously not helping, especially not with high notes because think of your vocal cords as elastic bands. If you, if you have an elastic band in your hand and you would stretch it out and you would pluck on it, it would sound higher and higher, right? The further out you go, the higher the note becomes. Well, that's a little bit what happens with your vocal cords. So you can see what my hands are doing. The higher the note, the more space they need. And that space needs to be created in your throat. And that's where the basics come in. That's where the breathing needs to be right, where the breathing support needs to be right, where the tension around this area needs to be right. Else, the system around the vocal cords will not provide the necessary space. And that's when it starts to sound tense or the voice just doesn't do it or oh, all the effects you, uh, you might be familiar with. So you need the right space for those vocal cords to really, really go there. Um, think of again as, as, as a vocal cords as the elastic band, also very low notes, then they become very thick and flubbery. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's also why low notes are so hard to control but for a whole different reason, um, because they really want to control the air else it just becomes a really weird sound. And uh, that's where all the breathing support uh, comes in, the right breathing techniques, but also once again, the jaw. In the previous masterclass, I told you that the lower jaw should always be behind the upper jaw. Not go front, no stressing, no reaching either. So it should be behind. Well, there is a little bit more to it because there are so many different styles of singing. When you belt a note, hey, it's more like a smile. I reach up with my with the corners of my mouth. It's almost like I could bite into an apple. Hey. But when I sing a more operatic kind of note, I hang it down. I want to make a lot of space because I use different spaces in my head and the actual, well, uh, mouth where a lot of, uh, of the acoustic comes out. So even an E is formed on the inside where also is formed on the inside that I can use the jaw a little bit more to help form the notes. So those, those things are important to take into consideration when you start singing that uh, the vocal type also kind of determines how the position of the mouth is going to be. But always the jaw is relaxed, it's not tensed, yet with the biting apple principle of hey, there's a little bit more tension around this, but it's not tensed and I'm not clenching my jaw. And with the operatic stuff, it's, it's much more open and down. Um, but always back, I showed you a little bit of the exercise where I put a finger behind my upper teeth, maybe you've been already trying it. And in the meantime, you can try to quicker. Maybe in the meantime, you've been pushing your finger forward because it's really important that you keep it straight. And I just wanted to stress that one more time. If you're going to try this at home, do it in front of the mirror so you can see if the finger is still straight or slowly but surely still getting pushed out by the jaw, that's going to win the fight. So you really want to push it back. When you do this exercise, of course, um, it's very hard to pronounce any words. So it's not there for that. It's just to focus on what the actual jaw is doing. And um, when you're warming up or you're really focusing on breathing exercises and you're putting those breathing exercises into notes, you can also already connect this exercise to that. 
as I said, we're going to build up step by step, focus on different parts of the body that we need to learn how to control to eventually get them pre-programmed enough that it's a complete automatic thing to, that happens. So you don't need to think about that anymore so much when you actually start to put things, all this knowledge and all this pre-programming into a song which of course is the thing, like it said also in the previous masterclass, when I'm on stage with, with Nightwish, I don't think, oh, I should focus on my belly. Oh, I don't know if the position of my jaw is okay. Are my shoulders down? Am I tensing my... No, all those things I've done before. By the time I'm on stage, that's all done. I have been studying a lot and I have had the pleasure to study with good teachers that taught me step by step where to go to and people that needed to help me reprogram if there were things not going correct already. Once again, give yourself a little bit of time. Try to sing like this. Focus on what your jaw is doing. Don't let it push it, your finger out. Keep it straight and see if you can make a little bit of a smile. Hey! Or let it all hang. Oh! Finger should be straight. All right, good luck. Thank you so much for watching this second masterclass. I hope you were able to pick something up from everything I've been telling you. Once again, give yourself the time to practice. Give yourself the time to get this fully automatic into your system and it's not done by a day or a week or a month. So give yourself that. And most importantly, enjoy doing it. Um, it was a pleasure to tell all this to you and uh, there will be a third masterclass coming up also where I'll be going through some of my personal favorite warm-up exercises. So stay tuned and if you did not subscribe, please do. See you next time. <laughs> that was a really good class. I really enjoyed that. There's so much to talk about. Um, yeah. I was making mental notes. The first thing... Uh, that, that I wanted to mention right off the top of my head was the the belting versus the more classical operatic mm -hmm. singing, right? Uh, the biting an apple, right? That's really good. Um, yeah. I, I haven't heard that before, but I've definitely sang that way, and I feel that that is absolutely correct, right? Right. Um, so, and then the more operatic, um, where, you, where you drop the jaw more, right? Um that also is that was more the way I was trained um putting the finger there oh and I and I can feel like a little bit of pushing like she was talking about I can feel a little bit yeah. not not a lot like I don't think it's actually moving my hand forward or anything but it's enough that I can feel the pressure on my knuckle and on the the side of my finger so I can also do the same thing on the ah. Oh, I'm so so Yeah, I feel it a little bit, pushing on my finger. No, it's because mm -hmm. you're just not used to using these muscles. Like, create your shock face. <laughs> Come on, you can be better shocked than that. There you go. <laughs> you got to really open the mouth and bring the, bring the cheeks forward to flatten the face to make that shock face. And that's kind of the same idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So other things she was she was saying to make the e on the inside of the mouth. That is so important not to over e, right? Because e is the most irritating e sound ever. I feel like I do that a lot too because I have I have this like nasal sound a lot of times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there was some there was some things back at the very beginning. Um, when she was talking about taking the deep breaths and squeezing the belly to push it out, um, that reminded me of three-part breathing that I learned in yoga and also in music lessons, although it wasn't called the same thing. And then the other thing we were doing where we were um, using the belly to push the air out rapidly, the ah, 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 that's uh -huh. reminiscent of the yeah, breath of fire. The, the, the breath of fire from yoga, um, mm -hmm. just with tone. Right? And I, I practiced that a bunch, um, you know. And then she was saying that the inhale happens on its own. You don't have to, like, think to inhale. You don't have to take a giant inhale, right? Oh, 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 o
right? I'm not like trying it to do anything with my mouth any more than when I'm talking, mm -hmm. right? The belly is doing all the work, and then my voice is just allowing the vibration to come out at that same time, okay? Right. So that was great. I, I really I like that because that, in my mind, that kind of merged, you know, some some loose ends that I had as a voice teacher um, mm -hmm. that helped me to tie it up. It was great. It was just, this, I mean, she's amazing. Um, yeah. And I had one more point. Um, the way that she was talking about using your muscles to help to push the exhale out beyond the belly and the abdomen, right, into... Mm -hmm. Right, the back muscles, the the muscles on the sides, right, like yeah, the, the, like all these muscles that she's saying to use to like have that posture, so that you now have these muscles accessible to you. They're they can be used, right? Before they're not used, but now they're used, mm -hmm. right? So you can squeeze the air out of your lungs to help you to hold that high note longer, right? Right. So you don't run out of air or lose volume or both. Mm -hmm. And that really breathy style of singing is really, really huge right now. Right? Yeah. Where you have that very breathy voice. Right? It almost sounds like Michael Jackson. So, right? Almost kind of. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. really high, breathy, heady voice. Right? And that's really huge in pop music. So in order to have that really high breathy voice, it takes extra air. But you don't want to have too much air pressure, like she said, because if you overinflate, then that's going to push your muscles out of the way so that you can't then get that air out in a controlled fashion. So it's going to kind of splatter out. Mm -hmm. And then you have too much. And so you'll break that note that you were, right? And so it's like, actually more beneficial to put all of your effort into singing in advance right and then just let it just fall out and this is basically the way that i already teach but she just put it so eloquently gorgeously and wonderfully Mwah! yeah she did <laughs> what do you think jennifer give me your yeah. review well i agree with you she she put it really well and i feel like i'm gonna also use her examples uh, as well as what you've taught me too, and, and kind of do both when I practice, you know, because everything I've I've learned from you is also very useful. So um, it's I think all the same. I, it is, yeah. And then I'm putting both together. Just it's just a different way of saying it, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we've had different teachers. That's for darn sure. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. yeah. But I I thought it was great. I I I think she's a good teacher and a great singer. So. Yeah, it's just an exceptional singer. Exceptional she really is. singer. Yeah, she she's just wonderful. So. <laughs> Absolutely. So, any final comments here before we wrap it up for the day? No, I think I'm good, and I'm looking forward to my music lesson with you next week. So. <laughs> oh, definitely. Thank you so much. And um, mm -hmm. she says there's going to be a third vocal class coming where we're going to do some of her favorite warm up exercises. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. So, everybody, stay tuned on Matthew's Music Lesson Studio for all the great stuff I have to offer. Check out my Patreon and check out my website, matthewsmusiclessonstudio.com. And I'll see you guys next time on Mastering Music with Matthew. Thank you very much for joining me on Matthew's Music Lesson Studio. Please share this video, like, and subscribe. And did you know that you can get online music lessons from me on Zoom? I record it MP4 for you. And you can then review that lesson forever. You can have it so we can go over it, you can practice along with it, and then that way, no matter what, you can relax and enjoy the lesson. So please, matthewsmusiclessonstudio.com. I'll see you guys next time on Matthew's Music Lesson Studio.